Hi guys, so this is 10 or so Linux and or bash commands that I find myself using pretty much every day. Hopefully some of these are new to you. I'm sure many of you are familiar with the bash history expansion, especially the case of uh, the bang bang which reruns the last command. Most commonly used when you need to execute it with super user privileges. But this command recall can be used in many other ways as well. The most common for me is when I want to execute the last known command that started with a specific string. So in this example I wish to log into one of my servers again so I just type bang ssh and we're good to go. So it's pretty common to know what line of a file you want to edit via compiler errors or whatever. And in this case, I have a small text file here that I've catted out, and I'd like to remove one of the extra fours here. So Vim and most other editors allow you to pass in the line you would like your cursor to be at when you open the file for editing. So I can just pass Vim the plus four argument here, and the file will be opened on that line, so I can inspect it and delete it without having to navigate the whole file. Now that's useful, but very often I'll know ahead of time which line of a file I need to remove. So it'd be nice if I could remove a line from a file without opening it in an editor first. This can be done with said by passing it the in place flag and then specifying which line I want to delete. You can also pass in ranges, which is especially useful if I'm fixing a merge conflict on two files or something like that. Another common administrative task I need to perform quite often is deleting all files in a directory except for a target file or two. Now Bash provides a nice way of doing this using extended globbing. So you can see here I have 10 example PDF files in this directory. Now if I want to delete all but example 1, I would type the following. This is saying remove all files that don't match the following in parentheses. So if you want to learn more about this sort of stuff, I would just practice your regular expressions. It's important to note that there are many different ways of achieving this, but Bash's extended globbing is perhaps one of the more intuitive ways of performing this operation. So for the next example, we're going to need multiple files. So let's take this opportunity to create some more files. This will serve as a quick lesson on how to create duplicate files with a suffix appended to them. Okay, so here we have our extra files, which are all copies of one another. Now, how do we go about printing all these files? Well, we could open each one manually and print them, but that's uh, kind of just crazy beyond one or two files. Also, what's the point of opening them if you know you just want to print them? So, here's where that LP utility comes in. So, we simply supply the LP command with the path of the file we wish to print. Uh, we can easily use wildcards to print some or all the PDFs contained in a directory. Uh, LP provides many other command line flags, like the number of copies we wish to print. So be sure to check out the documentation. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do with LP. I'm sure uh, many of you are familiar with the pushd and popd commands for navigating the Linux file system, which is especially useful if there's three or more directories you find yourself visiting frequently. But a very common situation you'll find yourself in is just quickly jumping out of a working directory to do some work and then wanting to jump back to the last visit directory. So this is where the cd dash command comes in. It just moves you to the last visit directory and is especially useful for toggling between two directories. A very useful command to print out all the commands available to your current shell is the compgen command. So the C flag will print out all commands available to your shell, the A flag will print out all aliases, and the B flag will print out all built-in shell commands. Now the command flag is unsorted, so commonly I'll pipe the output to sort so I can search for a program or a command I can't quite remember. Or if I remember a part of it, I'll grep what I can remember and use that to find the command I'm looking for. Another common task I find myself doing is making a change to my bash RC and wanting those changes to take effect without losing your current shell environment. So for example, let's add an alias for yo that simply echoes the message to the screen. You can see that the changes haven't taken effect because my bash RC hasn't been reloaded. You can resource your bash RC by typing the following source and then the path of your bash rc. A shorthand for this is just using a period instead of source. Another command I'll use fairly regularly is the shred command. It's useful for quickly erasing a file off an XFAT or FAT32 file system. You can see that with only passing the file name, shred has actually not deleted the file. It has only overwritten the file with random data. To remove the file after overwriting, you must pass it the U flag. 
Use the verbose flag for information about the progress of the command. You can see that after passing it the U flag, the test file is now deleted. Shred can also be used to wipe entire partitions in this manner. By default, Shred makes three passes when overwriting the data. The number of passes can be specified manually using the end flag. So I plan on making a video about Linux hotkeys, but I'm going to just show you a few that I end up using the most frequently. So as you all know, you can clear the console by typing clear, but using Control L will accomplish the same task with three fewer keystrokes. I don't know how many of you have been bitten by this, but for the first year or so of my Linux career, I was baffled by my command prompt just seemingly freezing. I'm to me this is due to the accidental typing of Control S. So Control S allows you to freeze the screen output, but it can be resumed by typing Control Q. Control U will delete from the cursor to the beginning of the line. The last hockey I'll show you is the reverse search. Bash keeps a history of previously executed commands, and this list can be searched for in various ways by providing search characters. Use Control R to cycle through history hits. So a lot of these hotkeys, uh, in fact, I think all the ones I showed you, involved using the control key. And what I've done, and many other Linux users do, is remap their control and caps lock keys to each other. You'll find yourself using the control key far more often than the caps key, so why waste such a prime piece of real estate? Give it a shot and see if you like it. Uh, this last tip is kind of distro dependent. This works with the add package manager, but also many others. You can provide the yes flag to auto select yes to the command prompt for trusted installs. So this is very useful in Docker files and if you're writing your own install scripts. Really anything you want to be non-interactive. Okay, that's it guys. My 10 or so useful Linux or bash commands you may not be using. Hope you learned something new from this video and keep tuned for more to come.